position, or the uh, order of notes is 1-3-5, the lowest note is the root. And so you can see that there. And so it sounds like this. If you order the notes 1-3-5 in root position, 1-3-5. But we have six ways to order the notes if we're not playing all the notes at once. Melodically, we can arpeggiate 1-3-5, 1-5-3, 3-1-5, 3-5-3, 4-1-5, 3-5-1, 3-5-2, 3-5-3, 4-1-5. Three, one. So this is something that's overlooked usually in most books on theory and when people discuss triads they're often arpeggiated It's rare that we get all the different orders of notes. They definitely talk about inversion consistently, uh, and often, you know, they think of first a root position as this or as this, but rarely do you see it in all the different six ways to order the notes. When we go to first inversion, it's three, five, one, the lowest note being the third. And again, we have these different ways to order their notes. We could go three, five, one. 3-1-5, or 5-1-3. So again, in, in first inversion, we get six more distinct triadic melodies. The last inversion for the triad, second inversion, where the lowest note in the structure is the fifth. So we have five, one, three, or we have five, three, one, or we have one, five, three, or we have one, three, five, or we have three, five, one, or we have three, one, five. So again, six distinctive triadic melodies in second inversion. So in the end, we get 18 different melodies for any triad. And this is what I have found to be lacking in most descriptions of triads and how to use them to create melodic ideas or just to practice them in a thorough way so you get all the different melodic possibilities with the triad. So basically, there's a lot of different ways to practice this. One is to pick one triad type out of the four, major, minor, augmented, or diminished, and one inversion, root, first or second inversion, and then one specific order of notes in that inversion, and then play that melodic shape through the keys. And that's a very simple way to do it. It's thorough, and over time you'll have addressed a lot of the whatever um, difficulties you have uh, visualizing, hearing, and playing the triad in its different 18 different melodic shapes. So let's just do that once just as an example. So let's say we pick first inversion, so the lowest note in the structure is the third, and then we'll pick the order of notes as, let's just do one, three, five. So then we would play this either up and down by half steps or around the circle. If I go around the circle, we go to F, and then B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. F sharp, B, E, A, D, sorry, and then G. So that's that first inversion triad order of notes one, three, five, and playing major triads in all keys with that melodic shape. You could also realize that when you think one, three, five, but you move that to root position this sound, 1-3-5. If you put it 1-3-5 in second inversion, it makes this sound. So, it's a lot of, uh, when we look at the math of this, there's a lot of ways to practice it, think about it. And this is a what I would consider a vertical exercise of sorts. Unless you're going up and down by half steps, this exercise won't be embracing voice leading. When you do it in half steps, then of course everything voice leads by half steps. So if I take for instance, the second inversion, and I play 
three, five, one, the over there melody, and move by half steps. Five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one. So there you can see, if we move up or down by half steps with any of these vertical exercises, the voice leading is perfect. Um, okay, so that's one way of looking at this. So let's look at, let's look at it uh, a slightly different way. So playing each triad in all orders of notes in all inversions. So this is a, maybe a more thorough, let's see, a OCD way of practicing this, where you really want to make sure you get every variation of every triad, every key, every type. Uh, this would take quite a while, I'd say. I mean, you could do it quickly, maybe get it done in 30 minutes, but I wouldn't recommend it. I recommend going slow and focusing on it, at least limiting it to one triad type, and even possibly one triad type and one key, and then use this as a warm-up, something you do several times a week or even every day if you're needing to work on, say, diminished triads, which are probably the hardest, in my opinion, of the uh, four triad types, augmented being difficult as well, especially for singing. So let's just take this uh, major triad here, and we'll do something more thorough. So I like to play them kind of like they are on this page. I don't do it always in this exact order, but I'll go one, three, five. So I'll do concert F. <laughs> This is in root position, then I'll go one, five, three. And then I like to go from the fifth down. So that's five, one, three, and then five, three, one, and then I start on the third. Three, five, three, one, five, and then three, five, one. So then in root position, I've done all six orders of notes. I'll do that once again, kind of slow. So that's how I do the root position exercise. Then if I go to first inversion, same, same basic idea. So three, five, one. And then three, one, five. And then I come down from the top note. One, three, five. And then one, five, three. And then I start with the middle note. shapes of the triad in first inversion. So once again, it sounds like this. I'll just go through So then we go to the last inversion, second inversion. So once again, straight up from five, one to three in second inversion. And then five, three, one. And then coming down from the top, three, five, one. And then three, one, five. And then one, five, three. And then one, three, five. Again, I'll do all those. my concert F major triad in all inversions and all orders of notes. And it's 18 different triadic melodies, each of which is distinct and has a different melodic sound. So the reason this is so valuable is that those triads, you know, especially the major triad, well, all of them, honestly, but the major triad in particular are the first three different notes of the overtone series. So it's physically just a very stable and 
natural sound. Um, and then once you do apply some theory to that, recognizing obviously that any triad exists in a variety of harmonic environments. So it's not just to say that the C major triad is on a C chord. So I'll say it is C major, C major seven. And I play second inversion, um, three, one, five. And that's my melody. Well, fine melody, but we have to recognize that this, uh, this shape could exist in other harmonic environments. So the way I find those other harmonic environments is through kind of deductive reasoning. So if we go around the circle, for instance, and I move the bass note to F, then we have what could be argued is possibly F major 7. It's a C over F sound. It does sound major, but it could also be minor major. we already have a very interesting use of the C major triad melodically. A nice melody now, because the harmony has made it more distinctive and interesting. So we've got F minor major 7, the melody is a C triad in first inversion, the order of notes is 3, 5, 1, sorry, 3, 1, 5, in F. So in F it ends up being major 7, 5 to 9, so all all fairly colorful notes. Um, the fifth being the most inside of the notes. And the nine being the most colorful, probably. Or maybe a major seven is pretty colorful in a minor major seven chord. So another thing we can do now is move it to, and again, this could be F major, also pretty. even be F major 7 sharp 5 with a, with a natural fifth on top, like a F harmonic major context. Maybe a little crunchier than you'd want to use, but might be great. Okay, so then we'll move to another. So we started in C, we went to F, now we'll go to B flat. How's this melody sounded with B flat in the bass? Okay, great. C over B flat, right? The notes create a C7 chord in fourth inversion, or sorry, third inversion, my bad. Possibly. Could be B flat um, 7, sharp 11, 13, 9. Sounds great. B flat 7, and then this E becomes sharp 11, the G becomes 13, and the C becomes nine so a melody with all color tones and comes from the C major triad so it could also be uh, an interesting mode of harmonic major second mode of harmonic major B half diminished natural nine natural 13 sorry B flat a kind of bright uh, half diminished sound choice, but I kind of like this B-flat 7 sound. It could also be B-flat major 7. Lydian. And it's pretty much infinite. You know, you can try a variety of different chord types and see if you like what you like. Could be diminished. Uh, so now we'll go to E-flat. So C over E flat, Kahneman voicing for like E flat seven or thirteen flat nine sound. So half full diminished. So that's really nice. Uh, uh, there's maybe some other context, but that's a really good one. So E flat seven, uh, A flat. Okay, A flat major seven sharp five, right? There we go. Major seven, and this A flat major seven sharp five, it becomes the sharp five, the third, and the major seven. So, good melody. Go to D 
flat. So now we just have C over C sharp or C over D flat, which is pretty much a diminished, often thought of as a diminished sound. So C diminished, C sharp, sorry, C sharp diminished. Nice sound for that. Let's go a little further here now. F sharp. So F sharp, C over F sharp, C sharp, a uh, very good F sharp 7 sound. Again, coming from possibly from half whole diminished. F sharp 7, flat 9, sharp 11. And then we go to B. And B is a, a tougher cell, maybe uh, could be like a. a Maybe F major 7 sharp 11 over B. Uh, this sort of sound. Or it could be C major 7 sharp 11 over B. Not super convincing melodically to my ear, but could work in context. Um, we'll go, keep going to E now. Now we have just an inversion of C major. Putting the third in the bass, so it creates kind of a C major and first inversion, or E, you know, E, Aeolian sort of sound, natural minor. Could also be uh, E7 altered dominant, where the C is a sharp 5 and the G is a sharp 9. So. So be a B, uh, uh, F major 7 sharp 11 over E. Okay, we'll go, we'll keep going here. F, B, oh no, we did that already. Sorry, E to A. So A minor maybe, right? This could also be F7. Sharp 9, flat 9. Uh, sharp nine sound. F sus, minor, minor sus. Um, could be, yeah, those are good, all good choices. Um, so we'll go to D. D could be D sus. G. So this is, you know, second inversion of C major triad, G in the bass. Could also be G, G minor 6. Or a colorful G half diminished. Um, G7. Uh, G sus. Sus flat 9. Of other things too, different inversions, and then we're back to C. So those are just kind of quickly looking at possible harmonic context for this C triad. And again, I'm just putting a different root, all 12 roots under the melodic shape. In this case, first inversion, 315 melody, triadic melody, putting it under all 12 chromatic pitches and seeing, using deductive reasoning, what possible chords could embrace that triadic melody. So that has a lot of implications, both for improvising, um, you know, using the triad conceptually to improvise from in these different harmonic environments, or co compositionally when you're writing a tune and trying to find either a strong melody. Triads make great melodies, you know, like think of uh, Mozart themes are often triads with rhythms. Um, 
so picking a nice melody f and then finding a good harmonic environment for it. So uh, that's, you know, a glimpse into how you might want to start thinking about it for composition. And then, uh, so let's, let's do more some more ways of practicing this. So another way I like to practice it is to take uh, one triad type, one order of notes, and like I said before, play it through the keys or play it ascending or descending by half step. The reason the ascending and descending is so nice is because of the voice leading, and it makes it very easy to hear the shape and start to get your ear um, uh, helping you with the triadic melody. So let's go to, let's use a minor triad for this one. So if I take, for instance, uh, let's do second inversion, uh, three, five, one. So this is B flat concert minor, second inversion, three, five, one. And then if I go up a half step to B minor concert. And continue up by half steps. exercises, try to think of the triad before you play it. The reason being is that you're going to want to immediately use just your ear and your fingers, and you'll inevitably make a mistake, in my experience. And so what you want to do is think of the triad right before you play it until that intuition is strong enough for you to let go of the thought and just play the melody, the triadic melody, up or down by half steps, which won't take long. If you think about the triad first, uh, every time you play it will be accurate and you will develop the intuition and muscle memory uh, and the sound it will all be kind of integrated as one thing then you can abandon the thought quite easily without uh, making mistakes so I would always recommend that think about it until it's safe to not think about it in other words you can successfully play the exercise or the melody uh, uh, several times you know and then as the speed increases you're going to want to make sure that that intuition and muscle memory is accurate if, if you want to play it quickly which I don't think is necessary but you can certainly strive for it so that's one way to do it another one uh, would be to play that same exercise around the circle and this is a vertical exercise in that the, there's no voice leading when I go from C minor to F minor it the whole melody just leaps a fourth it doesn't uh, voice lead although it does create a sort of voice leading over a two bar or a three bar phrase. So I'll play it that way now, so this is the same melody. <laughs> at ascending or descending by third, major, or minor. And although that's very valuable, I do it a little bit less because it doesn't naturally give you all the keys. You have to then shift to half step or uh, fourth to get all three, you know, in case of uh, diminished, your each key will give you four minor triads. And in case of whole tone or whole, uh, major thirds, augmented each one will give you three keys so you'll have to figure out how you're going to shift 
either up or down by half step or cycle to get all 12 keys. So I tend to do it in cycle or up and down by half step. Um, I'm just going to move this mic a little closer. So here's some other ways to, to think about it. Let's go back to major triad. Another way I like to do it is ascending and descending by half step where I'm shifting the order of notes. And so this becomes a little more complicated. So for instance, if I start on, let's say I start on uh, concert A flat and I play this shape. Over there melody. And now this is... Uh, second inversion, three, five, one. And then let's say I go, so when I go to the next one, I'll go to second inversion, one, five, three. So then I have two different shapes, which I'm going to be moving down and alternating with by half step. So again, uh, second inversion, three, five, one, and then down a half step. One, five, three in second inversion. So it's that, that shape alternating. So that can be much more interesting to the ear because it's a little more ornate and less predictable. So you have two shapes that are going down by half step. We'll do it again. And again, it sounds interesting uh, and is a little more inspiring to play or to practice. It gives you a pretty thorough understanding of triads, shapes, inversions, and orders of notes. You could change the quality so then I could do that same shape and do it with a minor sound. So, minor triads, and you can do this with any triad type. Um, so once you've practiced this method for quite some time and you're comfortable with the triads in different keys, then I uh, encourage more free improvisation or the improvising the orders of notes. If you do this prematurely, which you can certainly try, you'll quickly realize that you have very few options and that you don't really have a lot of freedom with any given triad in any key, triad type or key. Um, it seems, inf uh, you know, if, you, if there are in fact 18 triadic melodies, what you'll find is that you tend to lean on a couple, maybe two or three, and that many of them are not really ever played if you just jump straight into improvising. Unless you have a really excellent ear, that might be the exception just start hearing all the different possibilities. So I like to, after doing this exercise a while, then improvise a little bit. So the improvisation with the triads can be done in a similar way. You could ascend or descend by half step with one triad type. You could, ace, uh, you could cycle around the circle of force with one triad type. Of course, you can improvise triad types, vary them, uh, ascending or descending by half step around the circle. But I usually stick with one as having a simple parameter that is easy to hear and easy to start to get some success with. Uh, lastly, taking this to a song and then picking a specific triad type for each chord and trying to limit yourself within the, uh, the triad type you've chosen and maybe even a specific order of notes and inversion. So we can talk about that in a minute, but first let's talk about just improvising more freely. So if I descend by half step uh, using major triads and just kind of improvise the shape, nice and slow, 
start on G concert and come down. <laughs> So I got back to G. So I'm just, as I'm descending harmonically by half step, I'm improvising the orders of notes for each of the triads and trying to make it going slow enough to be able to kind of make some choices both with my ear and with my intellect, with my mind, to make it diverse and interesting and ever-changing as opposed to it being consistently uh, repeating specific sounds or patterns, you know, improvising the shape. Uh, you can introduce some rhythm to that, so I'll do the same starting on G coming down for an octave, just add some rhythm. <laughs> staying a little bit longer on each of the triads. triads. You could also s continue to move quickly down by half step and play rhythm, in, in which case you may not play all three notes of each triad. It might sound like this. <laughs> Once you're improvising with the shapes, it's fairly infinite the number of interesting lines and melodies that you can come up with. Uh, you can play all three notes of each triad, one or two notes of each triad, or more. You can repeat notes, five, six, seven notes per triad by repeating notes or elongating notes. Um, and it's loosely based on Garzon's chromatic concept, uh, triadic chromatic concept but it's taking away the chromatic interlude that he often talks about between triads. It's just working specifically with only the triads. Um, so let's do that same thing with minor. So this would be minor. I'll start on, uh, again, a G minor concert, and I'll, do, I'll just be a little strict about playing all three notes of each triad when I'm coming down, and I'll randomize the order of notes and inversion. <laughs> for improvising, if you're doing this, just descending by half step using minor triads, uh, this would be a free concept over a structured tune if you were playing something. I use this a lot on modal tunes. So like say you're playing impressions, one chord, you've got this concert D minor for 16 bars. This comes in, this works really well over a drone, a pedal point, or one chord. Uh, uh, you know, you can use it over a tongue like 26-2 that's moving tons of harmony constantly moving every two beats but I find it sounds a little it's easier to hear and it sounds better over a modal environment and that's just for me the way I've learned it and the way I hear it so it worked for me it works well over a modal environment um, and so if a tune was like that or it stayed on one chord for a long time I might use some sort of descending triad by half step or ascending triad by half step any triad type, it's a free concept, so you're not really, you're creating a line that's kind of atonal, free, but still has some kind of melodic in integrity, since it's built in triads and it vo the, the harmony is voice leading up or down by half step. Um, so if you're going to do this over a tune, let's talk about it now over something more specific. So if we pick all the things you are, something that we all practice and know, it, taking a specific triad, uh, order of notes and a specific inversion is what you'll do and you'll use the triad itself at first um, the triad of the song so the first chord is F minor so you would pick an order of notes for this F minor triad again you could use a variety of triads over F minor any any triad from possibly from the Dorian scale but 
what I always do is I start with the primary triad, the triad that the chord is named after. Um, and so if I pick like three, here's first inversion, three, one, five. <laughs> then going to the next chord, B flat minor. <laughs> e flat seven. <laughs> A flat major. <laughs> D flat major. G, jumping to G7, C major, and the next eight bars, and so doing that exercise through the progression. Coming back to the top, you could change the order of notes. So let's say now I go to second inversion, um, three, five, one. Next eight. Doing this in a very orderly fashion, it's a vertical exercise. You're playing the same shape on each chord, but it's very easy to hear the harmony as a single note instrument as a saxophone player. Um, you can obviously change the rhythm. It can, you can add a rhythmic element to this. Uh, you can improvise the rhythm. You could do it with a play along and still keep the integrity of the exercise in place. So another thing you can do is it maybe on those dominant chords there, there's on the first eight bars, there's two dominant chords, the E flat seven and G seven. You could use the tritone substitute and it would give you something that would sound cool on the tritone. So if I go back to that first triadic melody. <laughs> flat minor to A7 to A flat major, so it voice leads great. And then when we get to the G7, put the tritone there. And it ends up being another D flat triad. D flat major, D flat 7 to C. So again, it's very clear that it's infinite what you can do with the exercise. Coffee. Okay. So the last thing I'm going to talk about and maybe get into this in more detail at another time is the idea of adding a note of embellishment to your triad. So you have a triad melody, and if you can picture the triad melody, it's three notes, and that you can put a note of embellishment before or after any of those three notes. So there's a basically four locations to add a note of embellishment. So for instance, if we take that first triadic melody I was using on all the things you are, first inversion, three, one, five. And let's say I want to use the nine, the natural nine, as a note of I could put it before the shape. It would sound like this. So on the G7, I ended up using a, a flat nine there. But you don't have to. You could go to natural. So that's putting the note of embellishment, in this case the 9, in that register. If you put it above, it would sound maybe a different. Might Maybe more intervallic. It might be more interesting to some people to practice it that way. Or you could put the 9 after the shape. So here's our triadic shape. First inversion, 3. One five F minor. I could put the nine after the first note. Or I could put it after.
after the first note up an octave. Oh, that's nice. Use the flat line there. And that sounds like a really nice melody. So by adding a note of embellishment, in this case the nine, uh, after the first note of the triadic melody, we've found a really, in my opinion, a beautiful melody that's based on an embellished triad. Um, in this case, we're starting with a minor triad with a nine as a note of embellishment. We could put the nine after the second note of the triadic melody. Here's the triadic melody. <laughs> It's also nice there. really nice too. I don't think I've ever played that one. So this exercise, uh, you can expand on it really easily by adding one note of embellishment and placing it deliberately within the triadic melody to find your own interesting melodies. In this case, it's a triad with an added nine. And I've played this triad, since I'm using all the things you are, I've used it in minor nine context, dominant nine context, both dominant flat nine, dominant natural nine, and major with natural nine. So it ends up giving you a lot of interesting melodic content. You can use it to improvise with, you can use it to write, you could write a contrafact over this using triads in specific triads and orders of notes with added notes, a nine as an added note of embellishment, introduce a rhythm, and write a song that has a hidden concept in it. So let's put the triad now, the nine in the last place. So here's our melodic shape again. And put the nine last. So, not as interesting to my ear. My favorite places was to put it second uh, and third in the triadic melody. And I like the, um, it's actually good starting with the nine too, down the octave. <laughs> That's pretty too, but I think I like, if I had to choose, I'd just pick using the nine second and third in the structure. Here's the structure. So, or, those two, in my opinion, are great melodies when you're using a, a first inversion triad order of notes three, five, one, and you want to use, or three, one, five, and you want the embellishment note to be the nine. Those two melodies are great. So you could keep a journal of your favorite melodies that you discovered or culled out using this process, which is pretty thorough. And it's also based in concept, so you could improvise from the concept uh, very easily because it's a, it is a clear concept. It's a triad with a note of embellishment. So if on the first chord F minor, I was just gonna improvise with the F minor triad and the added nine, I'd have four notes that could be played in any octave, in any order, any inversion. So I could improvise with those four notes. So that's just the three notes of the triad and the nine. So just like we took the very strict way of practicing the triad, then we improvise freely with it. You can do the same thing when you add a note of embellishment. Once you have a four note cell, the triad gives you 18 order of notes. And the, the once you add a fourth note, because of the extra inversion it allows, you end up getting 96 orders of notes. So it already is ordering on infinite if you introduce uh, rhythm and phrasing and all the other musical elements. So once you have a concrete melody, say I take this 
Try to answer. Then I could practice improvising with a triad added nine. So, uh, you know, limited success on that pass, but you get the idea. Um, basically, using a very limited amount of notes to practice improvising with, which gives you a lot more freedom with rhythm and phrasing because you're not trying to play all seven or eight notes on each of these um, harmonies. You're restricting yourself, and I think that it fosters creativity. All right, so that's about it for today. If you have any uh, questions for me ever, just put them in the chat and I will get back to you or talk about it in the next discussion.